It yeah. changed the face of football for South Australia too. I mean, we were, un, as you said, almost unbeatable, and uh, you know the other clubs didn't really cotton on to how we were playing the game, and uh, they still stayed in the doldrums, really. Uh, nowadays, it, it's a handball job, but I mean, we kicked the ball uh, quickly all the time and made an attack straight away from the back line, straight through, and, uh, you know, this confused people. They, the quickness of the player hitting the ball, you know, the other clubs couldn't cotton onto that at all. He was the, the number one influence on my career, without a question, as a, as a player and as a coach. Like, when I was asked to take over the coaching reins, I really had just finished playing. I was probably going to play on in um, in 96, but uh, right at the end of the pre-season, I thought, oh, no, I reckon I've had enough. And um, then when Brian come to me about being the coach, um, yeah, the first person that I spoke to was Dad, and we just talked through different things. And um, yeah, he was such a, a amazing influence. And um, and he wasn't the sort of bloke that would um, you know ring up and say you should do this, you should do that. He was just there that you know if you were willing to ask, uh, wanted to know something, he'd be there with uh, with all the answers. So um, to have that sort of resource, um, I was really lucky. He was able to you know use the intelligence intelligence that he had to um, you know do stuff in coaching that um, people are doing now and they're sort of thinking, wow, isn't this fantastic? But Dad was doing it back in the 50s, so uh, he was certainly a visionary and very much um, you know, before his time. I've got books there. 1972, Dad would have me writing every stat out from every player. They'd publish it in the news, so then I had to keep it in a book so he could work out who was standing who, what the stats were, all of this. So way before champion data, we had Jenny and Foss data, you know, that would sit there. And then he would take, he would make notes for all the players, not only during the season, but at the end of the season, saying good things saying what he wanted them to do better. Yeah, I learned a lot from, from a lot of good people. Foss Williams was, was my first coach, um, and Foss, everyone knows, renowned as, the, as one of the greatest coaches in Australia and, and a great Port Adelaide man. And um, he was a rover, as I was, and Foss, as much as people always thought he was ranting, raving Foss, uh, and he was, in that sense, for the team, uh, but individually, one-on-one, -on -one, he wrote my, he wrote a script out for me, which he typed out, because he's a really intelligent guy and he worked in the post office as a, a senior a chief executive, I think, ultimately. But he typed out for me on his typewriter all the things that I should do as a rover, so you learn a lot out of that. So there's a lot of, a lot of, and I, I would read that before every game and I pass it on to the Paul Beltons and Timmy Genevers of the world. So, you know, that sort of legacy passes on, but, but he's a coach who teaches you a lot. Illustrations of innovation, Dad would, um, uh, at times Dad would get us to uh, watch the players, you know, maybe the on-ballers, and we'd plot where they get their possessions on the ground. And this was just way before, you know, champion data and you know, people did this sort of stuff. And, you know, players would reflect on, he would take red, red towels out at, um, I think, time on period so that they'd know that this is danger time and you have to score and, we got beat about three games straight. And he said, we're not trying hard enough. We're not trying hard enough. We've got to do something to make sure we see something. Not, anyway, the, 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 on the Saturday we come down here and uh, Vaughn was in the, in the um, kitchen with an ironing board and an iron. And uh, I said, what's going on? I said to Yogi Bear, what's going on? He said, I don't know. So if I was coming, we were getting stripped. And he said, right, oh, give us your shorts. So he took them out in there, 20 pair of shorts, and she ironed a little white adhesive tape on the leg. So when you've seen that white tape, am I trying hard enough? And that's what you have to think about. He had them all. <laughs> that's why we won. You know, he was, as soon as Port Adelaide said, look, we want to play in the national competition, he was very much, you know, you know, Bruce come to Dad and asked him about it and he was 100%, yeah, let's let's do it, let's make the decision and go in and, um, yeah, that, um, you know, I played in, in six premierships and coached three in the SNFL, but, you know, the day that we won in, at uh, the MCG was just, um, you know, it's, it was another level above all that, just to be, to see all the guys that I played with, um, the older guys had played for Port Adelaide, everyone just come together and it was such a, a wonderful achievement that um, the, the club was, you know, the only club to come out of suburbia, be admitted into the AFL and, um, you know, bring all its history and its uh, fantastic support and that and, and to win that 
on that day in 2004 was um, yeah, something that uh, we love and cherish and we'll never forget. Here he comes. <laughs> Look at that. An outpouring of emotion from Mark Williams. He's the proudest man in the land tonight. I asked him yesterday whether he felt that his late father and his late brother and his mother, who recently had heart surgery, were with him today. He said he did. Look at that. There it is. It's all over. Port Adelaide. They had the power to win. And it was very much history in the making today. I think he was there that day, you know, like, um, and the special, there were two special things. Um, the fact that mum could go was really important to us because she just had an operation for a heart operation. We didn't think she was going to make, and then she actually got to go to the grand final. Uh, you know, I went down the end there, and uh, mum come down in the crowd, and I uh, embraced and gave her a kiss over the over the fence. Wow, pure magic. And when mum was there, if mum's there, dad's there, and um, just. Dad would have been going, this is why we entered the AFL, this is where we are, this is where we belong, and this is what people need to see, that, you know, we strive to get there, and we made some mistakes maybe on the way, and that's what I said about learning. Dad would have been proud that Mark wasn't the same, and he continued to learn and change, and the players were challenged. Um, he would hopefully be like me and go give them all a medal instead of just the ones out there, because it is every player and person in the group. Yeah, he was just a loving father. He was uh, very much uh, looked after his children, made sure that they had the best of everything. Um, worked really hard so we could, uh, you know, probably have more than what he had as a kid growing up. Um, to come here at Nova Gardens to live opposite the golf course, you know, we were out there playing golf, playing tennis on the tennis court. So, um, yeah, he provided a lot of things for us and certainly set us, set us off on a, a good path to, um, you know, carry on that tradition when we had our own children. He was. Um, Proud of all his children, that was the beauty of dad. There was no favourites, um, you know, even though I was the young one. They used to call me the golden child, but uh, I don't think I, I was any more a favourite than everybody else. And obviously when Anthony died, it devastated everybody and, and certainly mum and dad. But um, being a strong family, we were able to get through that. And, uh, you know, he's always in our thoughts. It's been a long time since he's gone, but still very raw. When he died, that took more out of my dad than anything that I can possibly imagine. Um, dad always felt that there was a fairness to effort and what you did in life. And then all of a sudden, the person who probably put in the most effort, you know, like to get where he wanted all the time was taken from us. And um, while mum's, mum, I think sort of having a really strong faith was, yeah, okay, we're gonna keep going. Um, dad from that moment on was always a little sadder in life and um, Dad was proud of everything that Anthony could do. And so were we all. So when I got married, I had a number nine and his badge. On. So we carry him with us every day. And that's the way I look at good people that we've lost. It's the same with mum and dad. On his 100th birthday, I'm not gonna celebrate, you know, oh, be sad my dad died. I'm gonna celebrate that he lived and what a life we all had together and hopefully Whatever happens next is going to be a good thing for us all. Wherever we are, we're all going to celebrate many premierships all together afterwards. For Christmas every year, we would go up to Ashford or to Woodville to the different areas and Dad would actually make sure... He, he looked after people who were not so fortunate. He understood that not everyone had the same luck in the background of life and how can we help everyone get better. And so on his birthday, I'll be celebrating in the Von and Foss Pavilion over there, um, you know, like, what can we do to actually go, yep, thank you for a wonderful life for all the rest of us. Thank you for the joy that my dad brought, I think, so many people at a football club. And, you know, if his legacy at Port Adelaide lives on, it should be to live on that this club is a family, this club has been people who really do care about each other. But to get better, we are going to actually embrace the fact that we're never going to be perfect but we're darn well always going to be trying to get better and we're going to just embrace everyone who's in it that wants to join us. So I don't care where you come from, come and join us and let's be brilliant.